Okay, uh, translating trigonometric functions. So we just went through amplitude and period. Uh, we used somebody else's videos this time. Uh, that may not be true the following years, but here we are. Um, so there's a little bit of resetting that has to be done. We have to talk about the generic function, as I call it, um, our general function that we're going to use in our class. Uh, of course, the function can change. That could be sine, cosine, tangent, etc., etc. It could be x cubed for that matter, but uh, for the focus of this video, we're going to have a, b, and the variable, whether that's x or theta, 6 or 1 half dozen, the other, minus c plus d. So your teacher may do this differently. Um, other folks will do it differently. I know some teachers in our school will use Greek letters like phi and omega. I don't know if that's, I think it might be the other way around, but it's not important. Um, just know that you could use pretty much any variable that you want uh, for these numbers. These are constants or coefficients. They're not variables like in the equation. The variables in the equation are y and x, or like I said, theta. These other values are constants. This value has to do with the amplitude, which we learned about in the previous video. This one has to do with the period. And these two will have to do with translation. This is a horizontal. It will affect the horizontal. Horizontal, I can spell. And this one will affect the vertical location of our trigonometric function. So, and hopefully we'll do this more quickly and not take too long. So here we go. <clears throat> so let's, let's go back and revisit this idea. y equals x squared. That's a parent function. It is the parent function of uh, y equals x squared, or it's a quadratic, or a parabola, however you want to think about it, function. And let's just talk about this x squared plus 7. What the heck? So how I think of it is this. This function here, let's actually uh, underline this in blue. So when I graph it, you can see what we're talking about. And this guy will be the red function. Let's go to black. Let's add a page. Pow, pow. OK. So let's graph both of these functions together over here. So the red function is the parent function. It looks something like this. OK, it's a parabola. <clears throat> and how does this one affect, how does this number, this constant, affect the parent function? Because if it wasn't there, for instance, they would be exactly the same. But it is, in fact, there. So how does the 7 affect it? Hopefully, you're drawing from last year's course. You would say, hey, it looks exactly the same. except it's shifted up seven units. Let's arbitrarily state that that's x, excuse me, y equals seven. That's y equals zero, of course, and x equals zero. x axis, y axis. And so that moves it up seven units. If I had another function, let's call it the purple function, y equals x squared minus four, it would be exactly the same as the parent function, except it would be down Trying to make this close to appropriate. Four units. So this would be negative four. All right? So that's just a review. Everything that we do this year with the trigonometric functions is works really exactly the same. So hopefully your teacher talked to you about translation and transformations in this manner. If not, it's going to be kind of new to you. So let's go here. Go back to single page and let's talk about this. Y equals parent function, let's use theta. So parent function looks like this. Let's do it in black since I already used black for the function. So sine looks something like that. It has a period of 2 pi. So it takes from 0 to 2 pi. It has to travel 2 pi before we get to a place where we're repeating the, the, a section of the graph. And the other important values in this function then would be pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. 
Yes, in the other videos, I used degrees, degree measure, um, but mainly that's because I don't want to clutter your head. I want you to learn about the sine function, and then uh, we introduced the radian measure uh, during class uh, in with respect to this idea of graphing of the function. So now let's talk about or consider sine theta plus five. This is the theta axis, this is the y axis. So plus five would look exactly the same as this function, except it would be shifted up five units. It's not gonna to be too great scale because I didn't make enough room. So I made, uh, so we're gonna to have to do this. I guess we'll do this little thing. Oops, poopy face. Somebody made fun of me the other video because I did that little musical thing there. Anyway, y equals, let's slide it down here so we have some space. Uh, I'm going to put this break in here and I'm wasting time. Da 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 da. Graph break. Uh, and so this is 5. And so the midline is at 5. Okay? So let's look at a horizontal translation. Uh, y equals, let's use cosine this time. Y equals cosine x. That looks, parent function looks like this. And of course, that's at zero. Two pi, pi, pi over two, and three pi over two. So that's what the parent function looks like. Let's start thinking about y equals cosine. And what I had up there was this, b x minus c. There is a plus d, but let's, let's make it 0 this time, and let's make the amplitude 1 so there are no changes in that aspect. And we're going to actually make that 1 so there are no changes to the period, so that the period still is 2 pi. So let's write in x minus, somebody pick a number, let's say 3. So x minus 3, and so what does this minus 3 do? Let's go back in time, boop, 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 one more. Note, this is how I think of it, note, the generic equation has this minus sign or negative sign in it. It is part of the generic function, so this is part of the function. The, the number for c is 3, is 3. So c equals 3. Now, if you go back in time to last year, you talked about this form of, that's the parent function. Here's the other form. I'm going to write the generic version of it. It was a x minus h squared plus k, where hk was the vertex of your parabola, but also, hopefully your teacher talked to you about this, this number stretched it out, made it taller or compressed it, so made it skinny or fat. And this number, like we've just reviewed, moved it up or down, it took the whole parabola and slid it up or slid it down or translated it in a positive y direction or translated it in a negative y direction. If this was plus seven, it went up seven units. If it was minus five, it went down five units from the origin. This number, I believe your teacher probably taught you that take the opposite. And I would say, mm, yeah, it works, but it's not so much good. Think of this as part of the equation, part of the formula, whatever you want to think of it. It's part of it. So then this h is the actual number. So when this was y equals Let's make that a one and let's make that a zero. X minus two, the quantity squared. Your parabola shifted to the right because H equals two. It shifted to the right two units. When I say shifted to the right two units, I mean it did this. It went from here to there, if that represents two units. Two, one, zero. Okay, it shifted to the right. This is a positive two. This is a positive two. 
The negative sign is part of the equation. So in the same way, there are different books, maybe the videos that you watched previously about amplitude and period did not address this, or they wrote y equals a, oops, sine x or bx plus c uh, plus d, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and be careful, Mrs. Davidson uses a plus there. If you just make it a minus sign, everything works out the same way that you already know how it works as it did with the parabola. So no changes. Uh, what do I want? So again, we're talking about y equals cosine x minus c. c in this case is equal to 3, so that my curve shifts to the right 3 units. Okay. So let's get an example. This 3 doesn't work very well with sine and cosine. So let's get to an example and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, page. So y equals cosine x minus pi. Okay, so remember the parent function looks like this. Let's not do that there. Do, 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 do. So let's do this. Okay, so let's put in the parent function y equals, what did I, oh, like that got erased, huh? Uh, what did I say, pi? Okay, the parent function looks like y equals cosine x. So let's do the co the parent function in black. Looks something like that, right? And this is at 2 pi, because we can change the period. This is at pi. Halfway between there and 0 is pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Or again, whoa, what the heck's going on? You can think of that's 1 pi over 2. That's 2 pi over 2. That's going to be 3 pi over 2. This is up at 1. This is down to doo -doo -doo -doo, negative 1. And so how does this actually work? I'm going to tell you that I know that it looks like this. Shifts to the right a whole pi. So instead of starting here, 0 no longer equals 1. Pi equals 1. And how do I know that? We'll talk about that in a second. This gets shifted over half a pi, so it's here. This guy gets shifted over to here, and so we end up looking like this. Okay? Or, if you prefer, you won't be able to do this on your paper. Okay? So you, get to, you have to get used to the way I just looked at it. But, this gets shifted over a whole pi this much. Oops. This much distance. Okay? Whole pi, because we're shifting over to the right pi units. If that doesn't convince you, let's look at it this way. Let's clean that out. Okay, so let's put a value in for x and get out our y equals cosine x minus pi. Let's put in 0. If I put a 0 in for that, I'm taking the cosine of negative pi, which is equal to what? Unit circle, negative pi, cosine is equal to negative 1. Okay, so that would have been plotted. Let's do this right here in green. That would have been plotted right there. If I put in pi over 2, if it was just the parent function, I would have gotten 0. But watch what happens. Cosine of pi over 2 minus pi is equal to the cosine of negative pi over 2. Negative pi over 2 is here. And so I get cosine is equal to 0. And so what do we get? We get cosine is equal to 0. Instead of, oh, it would have been 0, yes. But watch, it's coming in the other direction, right? It's coming from the other direction. So now if I go to pi, what happens? The cosine of pi minus pi is equal to the cosine of 0. Well, what's the cosine of 0 degrees? Uh, 1 comma 0. It's equal to 1. And then boom, we're up here. OK? So that's how I know that this thing shifts over. Or that's how I can confirm it. I end up knowing it. If you're going to do this every time, you're not going to finish very many of the tests or quizzes. You need to get to a place where you can actually interpret what's happening with this number.
or I'll say it again and then wrap this thing up. You need to get to a place where you can interpret what's happening with each of these numbers without going point to point to point. Again, this is the amplitude. This affects the period. It is not the period. It affects the period. This actually isn't the amplitude either. It affects the amplitude. The amplitude is equal to the absolute value of the A coefficient. This affects the horizontal shift, or we also call it phase shift. Oops, there's an extra line there. And then this is your vertical shift. Okay, I feel like I'm going too long. I think, well, so for over six minutes, it's too long, but anyway, I've got to cover something. So that's it for tonight, and uh, have a great one. Thank you.